Okay, good morning, brothers and sisters. We're here for uh, a little video. I don't think it's going to be that long. Um, but there, I've been seeing a lot online, particularly in the Christian sector, um, this huge interest in this star blinking out. Um, they want to call it Beetlejuice. I, years ago, it used to be pronounced, to my understanding, as Betelgeuse. I believe there was an actor that went by that name, but I'm not sure. I actually prefer the pronunciation Betelgeuse. I don't like Beetlejuice. That's after a stupid movie, um, which they just want to empower that name for some reason. So I'm going to use the term or the name Betelgeuse. Um, but there's uh, a lot of interest of, uh, of it being blinked out or winked out uh, for 12 seconds thereabouts, if I've got it right, maybe 10, some says 10, um, depending um, but what caught me about it wasn't so much that this star was blinking out and that the king's coming to get his children and all that crap. Um, that's not what I was thinking of when I thought of it, because I actually saw it without the connection to all the Christian and all that. I just saw it on a side note that this star in the constellation of Orion, which in ancient Arab times was a female with her stars, um, and what I've come to kind of understand, you know, our our story, our picture has changed so much over time that she was the great archer in the sky and she, Betelgeuse in her arm was called um, the central one. Well, that would kind of point you almost to the, the holy one, the anointed one. And it kind of took my mind immediately to the verse in um, Psalm 7, I believe is where it's found. God says, I will unstring your bow, your covenant, so you can't fire your arrows, which is what she did to her. And then she took her glory away, her hair. So Orion used to have this long string of stars. But the thing is, is that the stars, some says that was strung in her hair, was the seven Pleiades. So we have a, a confusion of what the story actually um, used to be at one time, and so it was the great anointed one with her sevenfold spirit that got cut away. Now, we saw that story told with, um, of course, the big mighty Samson and having his seven locks cut away. Well, that's what happened to her according to the story of ancient Arab. And we know that her bow went silent. When she went silent, she stopped um, battling right? She just began to bow down, is what she began to do, is what we discovered. So anyway, regardless of all that, that I've come to understand, and how intricate this story was in the beginning, and how it's really evolved to change through uh, false religions, and a false god, and a false god telling you all this, um, which is your first commandment, not to have no other god before you, and we ended up with another God before us, as opposed to the real living God, where you were to find your law system, you were not to be found bound to an idol, male or female, but to the way of God. And that's what we all fell in violation of. So I got caught up, regardless of all that, was the word blink or wink, um, is how it's going to be in the word that we're going to look up here. Um, so this is what we're going to go to. We're going to go to Acts 17.30, and this is what God says here. Um, and we'll go in and look at some of the words. It says, at the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all people everywhere to repent. Okay, so at that time, right, at the times of this ignorance. So let's go into interlinear, all right? And uh, he don't command us, she commands us. She is the high almighty God. How do we know that? We go to the word God here. She, God, now commands. Now, we're not to put she or he here. But I'm going to put she as the almighty because it's the feminine that is first, which the whole world. Daughter that she had no power over the clay. Well, man don't form clay in his womb. The woman does. And this word here in the New uh, Testament validates it is 2316 theos. It's God or a God. And part of speech, you're looking at noun, feminine. 
noun, masculine. The feminine is first. So our father and our mother, but it's our mother who is the exalted one, who is the almighty God who was denied her power, but you brought another God before you. He, he, he. Um, so properly God, the creator and owner of all things. Okay. So the God that's speaking to us here is our almighty God, male, female, father, but it's our mother that you really turned on. So she is commanding having overlooked. What does overlooked mean? This is interesting. And why I think that blink takes place. It's a heads up to the ones who have turned away from an idol. What's it mean? I overlook. I take no notice of. I disregard. So she's forgiving her children of bowing to this idol um, to overlook. I'm not going to punish you. I'm going to overlook your times of ignorance of bowing to an idol I told you not to make. We'll get to that. Uh, ignorance. I have overlooked, right? Was the word blank, by the way. Yeah, let's go back and look at it. Having overlooked. I disregard. Now. Yeah. Overlook, not punish. Wink at. Right? I wink at. You can say blink. It'll give you blink. It's the same thing. Right? Overlook. Um, wink. Blink. Um, so God has overlooked our ignorance the idol, um, the times, and has commanded you to repent. I repent, I change my mind. I change the inner spirit, particularly with reference to the acceptance of the will of God. I repent. So what was our first commandment that God gave us? We know our first commandment here. Let me see. So your commandments, Exodus 20 is where our commands are gave to us. I'll pull it up here. So what does it say? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I am the Lord your God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, out of the house of bondage. Well, you were in bondage to a whole bunch of made up gods, but we saw the Israelites actually bringing this idolatry, idolatry right into their very own camp. And that is what followed them right into um, the Holy Land we discovered. Um, so that shall have no other gods before me that shall not make unto, th make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything, anything, neither male nor female that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Well, that's exactly what you're guilty of making an idol, a male idol. They made male and female. We discovered they made both a male and female idol. Over time, the males tore the female one down. They brought in this idea of a king as God. God said, you didn't want me. You wanted a king, and here at the end is king, and then they had to develop this term, king of kings. God was never a king. God says, you saw no image of me, you make no image of me, which is why it takes you to the word 2316. Ma noun feminine, noun masculine, but you denied the maker of the clay, which was your mother. You weren't to make an idol of mother, no more than you were to make an idol of father. But the men said, hey, if we can tear that one down and leave our standard, we'll be the God of this world. Which then leads you to the idol in Daniel 2 that you made, an idol of a man. And you've got women bowed like your harlot, like a common harlot, worshiping man as God. Now, we've got other things to talk about here. So we hit this verse in Romans 13, 11, in connection to the blank. All right. Um, okay. So let me paraphrase. We'll look at this, these words here in this verse. So it's Romans 13, 11, and God says, and do this understanding the present time 
the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. That ain't a man. Your salvation is the truth. That's what we discover. Your water is identified as the truth and you are free to come and wash the blood off of you. That's found in Isaiah 55 verse one. Come by, believe, come believe and wash in the water, not in the blood of an idol, of a man. So women would bow to man and allow him full power over her very own rights. God says in Job, I was studying Job just last week, and the daughter there, the daughter voice that is overlaid there, she gets so upset. She gets so angry. She says, what's the point of me, you know, trying to even do what's right? You're not going to listen to me. You're not going to hear me. And later on, God says, if you remain silent, how can I possibly take your part? How can I possibly say, well, she's right, you're wrong, if you're not even going to stand up for yourselves and take your own part? And that's where religion has got womankind right now, right down at man's feet, not taking her own part. She won't even speak up for herself. And so what? that's what it kind of leads us back, back to this time of ignorance. God's winking at. She gave you grace. She, she's willing to forgive you if you finally awaken up out of your sleep. So Romans 13, 11. It is high time that you awoke out of sleep for our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. So knowing is to remember. And this knowing, to remember, right? Remember the time, the hour already for you. Wake out of sleep. What's sleep here? We'll look at this. A figurative of a spiritual sleep. What's a spiritual sleep and where did we find it in connection to Baal, our idol? Where did we find this sleep, this spiritual sleep? And it's on the daughters to awaken. All right? You turned from the image that you're made in, which was your mother. You're not made in your father's image. You're made in your mother. And you bowed down to the feet of a male idol, which you were not to do. You were to keep the laws of mother upon your tongue. And you were to present them to mankind. Now, man turned on that covenant. We were, I was looking at that. He, it, it's, um, we'll, maybe we'll take a look at that verse two in a minute. Um, sleep from an obsolete primary, perhaps akin to hapo, through the idea of subsilience, subsilience, sleep, i.e. figurative, a spiritual torpor. Where'd we find torpor? Where'd we find that word? We found it here. I'm using Romans 11. Did we not? We discussed this verse. Uh, where is it? Um, what does it say? And this is in connection to Baal worship. What was Baal? Baal is another name for your husband as Lord and God, your bridegroom. Get it? Plain and simple. So Romans 11, this was all about idol worship. But what saith the answer of God unto her? We can ask questions too, girls. If you don't never ask the hard questions, you're never going to seek the answers. It's going to get you up from your knees, from the feet of that idol. God says, I will show the truth to those that order their conversation right, that ask the right questions. If this reasons to you as truth, then you ain't got much sense, I can tell you that. Verse 4 of Romans 11, this is where we found the word torpor, a spiritual sleep, and we found it in connection to the women in particular. But what saith the answer of God unto her? I have reserved to myself 7,000 who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Daniel 2, your husband is Lord and God and master and head over you. No, mother's quite upset. But so then at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. I winked at it. I let you be in ignorance. That's my grace, mother says to her daughters. I let you bow to your husband as if he was Lord and God. But now is your salvation nearer than you could dream of. It's here. Believe. Order your conversation aright. Ask the right questions and I will tell it to you. 
uh, Isaiah 55, come, believe the truth and wash in my pure water and eat of the good things of my kingdom. Um, but if you don't want to believe the truth, you want to bow down at the feet of an idol and be washed in his blood, just remember what you believe in, you bring back upon your own head. And that's more or less just what you got in this society. Women bowed to men as if he was Lord and God and head, and she got just what she deserved by doing that. She got yoked under his religious lies and laws. She's the one that's been forced to drink the bitterness out of the law system, not him. She's the one that's been forced to carry this burden, the deliverance of children upon her, not him. God says, you're without excuse not to understand my Godhead. I manifested it in what I created for your very eyes to bear witness to. And then you bow to man as if he's God and allow him to yoke you under his lies. So you brought it on your own head when you decided to bow to that lie. So I wink at that time of ignorance, God says. So for even so at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace, according to the time of my forgiveness. I have allotted you a time to pick yourself up from the feet of the idol. And if by grace, then it is no more of your works. I have forgave you, and I'm going to offer you the truth to believe it. Now, that's your choice. You can either believe it or not. So seven, what then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for, he don't seek for. Israel was the woman seed, she, women. And we saw the contamination of Balaam, Balak coming in as a plague into the woman seed where the men began to take these harlot wives into themselves and hearken to their religious lies in law, which come from Baal, Balaam and Balak. And so this contamination began to spread through the camp of Israel and it began to contaminate the women inside that nation as well. And so we find them bringing the solar calf deity right into the nation of Israel, their homeland that they would eventually uh, settle upon. And so we know that over time, the solar calf deity turns into Baal, the idol of a man standing as your Lord and God, um, which is also why you're supposed to part um, the waters of admix this admix of doctrine. It's really symbolic of two covenants, one of blood, the man and one of water from the woman. We see that symbology actually when we get deeper in our studies and when we're asking the right questions, God will provide the answers for you. But in Genesis 15, 9, we saw God saying, take these three animals. One was a heifer, one was a she-goat, one was a ram. And then the final two was a, a um, dove, which is feminine, and then a pigeon, masculine. Well, these final two animals were not to be divided. The first three was to be divided and set to one side, and then you were to place wholly the, the dove to one side and then the pigeon to the other side. Well, this was symbolic of two covenants, a male covenant and a female covenant. There's nothing else it can symbolize. And, but the truth was going to part, was going to walk up the middle. The sword of truth would part the admixture uh, in the end. And this is the covenant. And from um, that would come the true covenant of God. So we saw over time the Red Sea come in and hit her steps. Uh, you no longer saw my steps, God says. And we know the presence of God on earth was identified as women inside the nation of Israel who the men were really rejecting, which is why Balaam and Balak sends in um, their own women who already knew their religious lie in law to contaminate the men inside the nation of Israel, which is also symbolic of the serpents that were coming in poisoning the men. And we saw the women over time lose their position of power to a made up male God, which was Baal, which came from the solar calf deity in his contamination. God says, I didn't ask you to eat meat. I didn't ask you uh, for your, your uh, holy days. I didn't ask for any of these things. I asked for thanksgiving. That's all I asked for. I told you to make no idols, neither male nor female. And in the end here, you're calling out to a king. And God says, you didn't want me. You wanted a king. Um, and so you're not making sense. You're not reasoning. You're not ordering your conversation right to have the salvation of God presented to you, which is to buy and to believe the truth and the word of God, which is represented as water, pure water. So then it says, what then has Israel not obtained that which she, she seeketh for, which takes us to the verse in Isaiah 54, one, um, the contamination, uh, which, uh, is what, um, 
the more more are the children of the desolate spirit, she. Then of she who has a husband, Baal, he marries himself, Baal, a woman who will spout back. That's a harlot bowed at its feet, spouting man as God, because she won't stand up for her own cause and her own issues in the land, which then brings back her own bitterness of the law right back on her own head, because she ain't got the sense enough to reason and order her conversation right, which God will provide you with those answers um, if you truly seek the truth. So has she not obtained that what she sought for? which was the restoration of her children back to the spirit of her original covenant. Um, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. So we can go back to a blink in the Old Testament. We can. We're going to do that in a minute. So has she not obtained that what she sought for? So when we look up the word, I think it's seek. It may be obtained. Um, removed once from that or twice from that is um, the word birth, I believe. So it's definitely not the males here. We see the males standing around as if they can give life. Why now do I see every man standing around with his hands on his hips as if he can give life and every face is turned pale? So the men still think they're the God who gave life, Father gave life to everything. Well, man don't give life. I mean, your eyes are to testify to the creation of God. It is woman who shapes the clay and her womb and gives life to it. But you told the potter, the creator, the maker, that she had no power or understanding over what it was that she was creating. Um, and that was men removing her rights under the law um, and the stupidity of women really to bow down at the feet of a male idol and exalt his house while tearing her own down. Um, and then we find God saying in Job, well, if you women ain't got the sense enough to stand up for justice and for your own house, how can I take your part? You expect me to side with you when you won't even open your mouths. Um, so in Isaiah 42, we hear the travailing woman saying, she says, long time have I held my peace. Have I been silent? Now will I go forth as a travailing woman. I'm going to obtain that what I look for, that, that which I seek for, which is the restoration of my children back to my covenant. Um, and she, she's there seeing parting the admixture into the, to the truth and coming up through the middle and birthing her children. Um, so, but the election has obtained it. The election, what's the election here? Let's just look into this right quick. Uh, where's my pointer? Okay. Verse seven, Romans 11, verse seven. What's the election here? Okay. Come on. Okay. verse 7. We did a study on this quite a few years back. So the elect here is 1589, Strong's Greek 1589. This is how we order our conversation right by asking the correct questions and then going in and seeking for the answers by looking up the truth to form that truth within you, not by letting men on the pulpit preach Baal as God because that's all we're in right now. We're in idolatry. We're in idolatry. We're still in the land of Egypt, the land of idolatry, which is where the witnesses, the first bunch of witnesses, died in the land of Sodom and Egypt, uh, which is why you get that verse in Revelation, I'll, I'll repeat, to try to warn the witnesses once again, don't fall for their idols, don't fall for the lies, stand up for the truth call out for justice in the land, stand up for your cause, God. We know the presence of God was the wise women inside the nation of Israel. We see them being gave in covenant. Job speaks of this covenant in Job 30 verse 1 or 31 verse 1. Um, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid for what portion of God is there from above? The inheritance of the Almighty from on high, the Almighty would be mother with her daughters that she gives in covenant. That is mother's inheritance, those that she shapes in her own image. Um, so a divine selection, this is the elect. It is a noun feminine, those that she wakes up from the religious lie and from the feet of the idol of Baal as her bridegroom, Lord and God that washes her in blood. You don't wash in blood, you wash in water. Isaiah 55, buy the truth, believe the truth and sell it not. It's not for sale at any price. A choosing out, a selecting a choice by God, an out from. So it has the idea of coming out from the center, the midst. That's a representation of the spirit being pulled out once again. From the waters, from the people. 
Um, so proper selection out of into a given outcome theologically. Um, a divine selection um, to select, to choose out, and is always in the Greek middle voice. So these are her choice ones. These are her chosen daughters coming up from the feet of the idol. Strong enough to stand, her preserved ones, who remembers the truth of old, who have ordered their conversation aright, who have done the hard, hard footwork. Um, I pick out for myself, I choose elect, so this is 1586, one of the derivatives of that word, speaking to a conclusion, properly to select, to choose out of, by a highly deliberate choice, real heart preference, with a definite outcome as with the destination of a divine selection for salvation. So Yeshua in the Old Testament is salvation. It's a feminine noun. It's three, four, four, four. Oftentimes I'll cut off one of the four. Um, but it's three, four, four, four. And it's feminine victor, feminine salvation, um, which is going to help lead you uh, to this word here, this divine selection. Um, it's your women picking themselves up from the feet of the idol. Um, in 11, 7. So we were looking at blink and sleep, if we continue on. So uh, what then? Israel has not obtained that what she seeketh for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded, and many are. They, they just can't see this truth. Um, they've been, you know, they just... They can't see it. <laughs> they just won't ask the right questions. If their heart's telling them that God put woman in subjection to man as her head, who is a big fat sinner, if you can't see that, there's something wrong and say that that's God's way, then you don't know the God I know. Um, according as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of what? Slumber. Eyes that they should not see and ears that they could not hear unto this day or should not here to this day um so and what does and it's not david i've hit on this some but the daughter zion it was her elected and her anointed one that she sent with the law to earth her her actual inheritance and she says let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them what's on your table if it isn't wine and admixture of doctrine which leads to Baal the idol in daniel 2 what is it? If that isn't your stumbling block, you know how many people can't enter in through righteousness and upholding the law because they just can't receive that Jesus, the eye to wash them in blood. You're, you're as guilty as the Pharisees placing a stumbling block before the gateway of God. You were to have no God before you were to follow the way of God. And you made a male idol and you stuck him in the way. That's what you did. And God, the glory, speaks of this. She's angered. She says, see what they have sitting in my gateway? You see what they've got sitting there? Um, and that's in Ezekiel. And that's the idol that we find Nebuchadnezzar building out of gold, making out of gold, I believe, um, and stuck it in her way, in her gateway. Uh, so this is your stumbling block and a recompense unto them, which is also the snare in a trap, your admixture of wine on the table, which we also link back to Proverbs chapter nine. Um, and so the, the maidens were calling out from the high places saying, come into our gateway, um, follow the way of God, follow this truth. Um, and again, they wouldn't hearken to them. They weren't listening. They wanted the harlot. They wanted the harlot's way that would bow to them as if he was Lord and God and build their wicked system, law system up on earth, a blood, a system of nothing but bloodshed. Um, and we, if your eyes can't see that, you can't bear witness to that, then, then keep your eyes closed. You're blind. Um, which is what this verse is saying. As According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this very day. day you want to eat, drink of that admixture? God says, fine, but I will give to drink the pure living water found in Isaiah 55. When you buy into the truth, when you believe the truth and you wash that blood off of you and we see her washing the blood off of this select group of daughters, this elect group of daughters 
in Isaiah 4, 4, she says, I'll wash the blood off of you. I'll restore my daughters back to myself. And she says, I'll do that by winking at the time of ignorance. We were young, you know, and you can kind of see that play out in this world. When young girls will run after um, a guy that they say they love, and he turns up re really not to be who he claims to be. He's really just a big old um, nothing trying to claim he's God. And that's what we see in this world. Um, so she winks at that. She winks at the ignorance of her daughter's willingness to bow to a man as if he is Lord and God. And we do get that. We get that all over the place for anybody who can order their conversations. All right. So when we go in to, what was I doing? We were going to look at the word stupor, a stupor. And we know it's the lex eyes that was actually covered over. But they went to sleep. So it has the idea of going to sleep in a religious lie. Where she says at the end they will awaken up out of the dust of the earth. And I will hear a familiar spirit as of one who is speaking my word. Speaking my truth again. Um, so the spirit of stupor. What, what's it in Romans 11? 8. It's, it's 2659. It's feminine. Stoop faction. If I'm saying that right. <laughs> Deep sleep. Torpor insensibility man is god and he's your head uh doesn't that come back to a female body with a male head on it oh my they ain't playing that ritual out today are they i don't have a male head on my female body i have a female head yeah and that was supposed to be my mother not my husband not my father my mother 2316 is your Greek word for God, feminine, masculine. But the women turned from their head and bowed to him as if he was Lord and God. Went to sleep in this stoop faction, deep sleep, torpor, and sensibility. Yeah, father gave life to everything he did, did he? Well, if the tabernacle below truly reflects the tabernacle above, he can't. He can't give life. He can't create life. Only she can. 2659, properly a violent strike, a prick. Yeah, we see the bulls of Bashan surrounding this government of God that was set up in the house in the forest of Lebanon, which we actually see King Solomon reconstructing right next to his own um, structure, uh, which represented the male because we knew that he was taking steps to eventually overtake uh, her authority and claim her throne, which is exactly what we see him doing, which is why the number 666 links straight back to King Solomon one time in the Old Testament. That's where you'll find the reference of 666. He also was the one who went up to the high places and defiled himself. Uh, he took 700 uh, wives, supposedly. A <laughs> man's only supposed to have one. Uh, which is also links us to why a uh, man has a foreskin, which is why he's supposed to cut that foreskin away. That's a representation of the covenant with the harlot spirit, not the true living God um, or the spirit, uh, which was represented by the, the daughters inside the nation of Israel. We see him uh, taking 700 wives, 300 concubines. <clears throat> he's the one that made the high place. Now he brought Pharaoh, King Pharaoh's daughter up out of the city of David to this higher place but according to study he constructed it not where it was supposed to be he actually constructed it almost right next to the male temple so that over time he could tear that right down and bring her under him um, so he was taking every step to do that which is why then we get the key of solomon <clears throat> which is the harlot spirit okay i got to pause this a moment okay we will pause. Okay, good enough. 